Greetings, I'm Reverend Wendell Anthony, President of Detroit Branch NAACP, inviting you to stay with us for another version of Let the Record Reflect. We're very pleased to be able to talk to you about issues, events, people, and concerns that relate to our community, not only locally, but statewide and even globally. Uh, my guests today are former State Representative Keith Starworth, always a State Representative, even though you may not be in that specific position, who is the Managing Director for the Michigan Black Caucus Foundation, and of course, State Representative Lisa Howes, who is uh, with District 2, and we're gonna talk about a number of issues uh, concerning uh, Detroit, Wayne County, and Michigan. One of the things, um, uh, Ms. Stowe, that I have, uh, and welcome to Let the Record Reflect to both of you. Uh, you all recently, the foundation, um, submitted a resolution to eliminate funding disparities for Detroit students, and a part of your resolve uh, was this concern. You said, and this is going to the governor, it's going to the governor and to the um, emergency manager for Detroit Public Schools, and also Dr. Covington, the new head of the MEA program for the state and particularly for Detroit. But your resolve is that you're requesting that the governor and the Michigan legislator reverse their budget reduction request made of the EAA or provide a supplemental appropriation from the reduction with private contributions. Foundation resources create a statewide proportionate deficit finance line item in the K-12 budget to support EAA operations and to assure the enhanced academic supports and individualized learning platforms contemplated in the act. Basically, Keith, what does this mean? That means that the Black Caucus Foundation of Board of Directors opposes a separate and unequally funded school district for black children. Okay, now EAA for people who don't know what that is, what is that? The Education Achievement Authority is a system of schools that represents the five lo five percent lowest performing schools in the state. Isn't that a good thing? The concept is good, mm -hmm. but the funding for public education is always competitive. Mm -hmm. In this instance, the city of Detroit's Detroit public school system receives approximately $7,000 as a foundation allowance per pupil. Mm -hmm. The EAA will only receive $5,000, and they are supposed to improve mm -hmm. the lowest performing school districts. The inequity, of course, doesn't make sense. It certainly doesn't make sense if the mission of the system is advanced improvement and additional support. Mm -hmm. How can you do it and you have even less money than the poorest performing school district? So it's like making brick with no straw, basically. And, and essentially, I went to Central High School. Central is supposed to be in the EAA. Mumford, which is just being built, is going to the EAA. There are other schools. I think there's something like uh, six uh, high schools and maybe nine elementary schools, according to what Dr. Covington said. I mean, what is the end result of this if you don't have the money and are they going to cream the best teachers? Are they going? What's going to happen with that? Well, I think Reverend Anthony, you, as you know, the, the challenges associated with trying to implement a site-based management system mm -hmm. when we first began this school reform experiment. Because it was not thought through all the way, it's been a continuous process to still try to get there. You mean your and governor, Governor Rick Snyder, didn't think this through all the way? Well, you know, in terms of his dashboard, apparently uh, yeah. equity and financing was not on it. Um, <laughs> you know, so we, it, whether it was ignorance or an error, we think it is disingenuous to say that your objective is to improve the lowest performing so, school districts so with an equitable well, Basically, fund. it's like, uh, show me the money. Show me the money. Uh, Representative Lisa House. Now, recently, the state government awarded $300 million to various colleges and universities and community colleges all around the state. The University of Michigan got 30, Michigan State got 30, Oakland Community College I think got 10, uh, there are other community colleges, Lansing Community College got 10, but I didn't see anything for Wayne County Community College. Don't we matter? Yes, absolutely we matter, but apparently in this budget that it does not reflect that Wayne County Community College matters. And that is a big concern for myself and my colleagues in the, in the Detroit uh, mm -hmm. Caucus of the Michigan Legislature. Um, these type of inequities uh, cannot continue. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're saying that Detroit is important, and therefore our students who attend Wayne County Community College who are trying to advance and improve, improve their lives, mm -hmm. 
you got, like you said, show us the money. Right, I think because when you look at WC3, you have a number of single parent mothers, mm -hmm. you have a number of families who are trying to advance themselves, uh, who don't have employment, you have uh, those colleges and the primary base located in the city of Detroit, which is the ground zero for all of the economic issues that we're trying to deal with, and yet they didn't get any money. I, I, I don't understand that, particularly when the governor is talking about how important the EEA program is. He put in an emergency manager with Roy Roberts. He's we under a consent agreement, but yet where's the consent decree to agree to help us with our financial needs? Absolutely. When this governor first took office, he totally changed how dollars were being allocated for K through 12 and public or higher education to where now there are supposed to be more dollars for community colleges mm -hmm. because they realize that as our young people are graduating from a high school many of them are taking remedial courses to revisit what they should have gotten when they were in high school at the community college level mm -hmm. and so if we're going to be able to adequately get children or adults uh, in this matter from point A to point B in terms of their educational attainment the dollars have to follow those initiatives two other very prime issues because we don't have a lot of time and I want to do that in the next segment and that is I'm going to talk about this bridge development I want to talk about lighting in terms of the city of Detroit you know there's been a whole lot of bridge talk but I mean I, I just I'm concerned that we don't have a bridge that's going nowhere <laughs> uh, I wanted to come somewhere so Detroiters want to know, uh, and, and, and we're very concerned about our future, so when we come back, I want you to deal with those two issues. Stay with us. We'll be right back as we continue to let the record reflect where we are today. You're watching Let the Record Reflect with the Detroit branch NAACP, celebrating 100 years of civil rights and social justice advocacy. Welcome back to Let the Record Reflect. I'm Reverend Wendell Anthony, President of Detroit Branch NAACP. My guests are the Managing Director, former State Representative Keith Stallworth for the Michigan uh, Black Caucus Foundation and State Representative Lisa Howell of District 2. Uh, Keith, we're talking about this bridge. Are we, getting, are we getting a bridge to go somewhere or a bridge to go nowhere? <laughs> well, in the short term, it'll be going nowhere. But I think the, the real critical issue is uh, just as the governor worked very hard to outline a smart justice policy. We really need a smart economics policy as it relates mm -hmm. to urban communities in general in southeastern Michigan. Each time we have an economic opportunity now, we should be trying to stimulate economic growth in the city of Detroit. The supply chain in the city mm -hmm. needs to be revamped and reinvested in. Mm -hmm. The most interesting thing about the bridge is that it comes at a time when the Federal Highway Administration has granted Michigan right. a waiver Mm -hmm. for economic development or best value weights associated with contracting. Mm -hmm. And what that does is give the governor the opportunity to say that local businesses, local craftsmen, local residents should be the first to receive the economic opportunities and hiring associated with And this is the same governor that did not give no money to WC3. <laughs> this is the same governor that held up the $80 million for the city of Detroit. This is the same governor that has pulled the safety net from underneath families that are on state aid. This is the same governor that has increased the budget, the military, the prison industrial complex budget versus um, come on, Keith. Well, at some point, you have to ask who the target audience is. Okay. Representative Howells, in terms of the lighting piece, where are we out there and what's the take on that? Well, it's clear that no one would disagree that we need lights in yes. the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about is how do we get them on. Um, the city of Detroit in and of itself is not in a position to be able to put the lights on because of the financial situation that we're in. We can't issue debt uh, in terms of the $160 million that would be required to light communities in the city of Detroit. And so what we have been considering in the legislature the past two weeks um, is setting up a lighting authority that would have the ability to issue debt to get the necessary monies. But how is that money going to be paid back? That's the question that Detroiters wanted to know. And so there are some dollars set aside in a fund that primarily goes to support police, uh, the retention and recruitment of police officers. Mm -hmm. So my question is, are we going to hurt our police uh, public safety? Because we know crime is on the rise here in the city of Detroit and mm -hmm. lighting is a good, big part of public safety. So what's going to happen, there's another set of legislation over in the Senate that's meant to replace those dollars that would come out of the police, police fund 
uh, so that they are made whole. Mm -hmm. So that part is being taken care of. The question that most people want to know now is where are the lights going to go? Do we know where they're going to go? They're, that's going to be the subject of this five-member board, mm -hmm. according to the current legislation, the way that it is drafted. Five members from the city of Detroit, residents of the city of Detroit. So Detroiters will have a role in this. They're, but my issue is uh, where Detroit plays into this, uh, where Detroit jobs may be uh, a part of this, where Detroit vendors can benefit from this, where Detroit uh, learning and training can benefit from this as we go forward in terms of putting up lights knowing how to repair lights, knowing what's... We should also use this as an opportunity to train our people so that they can also be a part of this going forward. So I would hope that that's a part of this thing as well. Is there anything that we need to be doing in order to facilitate this? Well, what we need to be doing is continue to remain vocal on the issue, uh, making the state aware of what Detroiters need. You know, they say that we were afraid we had a cultural difference in asking yeah, I read for, that. for help. Mm -hmm. And so when we ask for help, help us in the areas that mm -hmm. we're asking not in the areas mm. where you think. Maybe we have a cultural difference in terms of how help is imposed Post. upon mm -hmm. us because sometimes folk want to say they want to help you uh, and really they want to hurt you. That's what um, uh, the Europeans said to the Native Americans, that we're here to help you. That's what the Europeans said to Africans who were living well on the continent. We're here to help you and so we know what has resulted from all that help. Oh, right. And so I'm simply saying, help me somebody. But bottom line is, as we look at the bridge, as we look at education, all this stuff, keep is related. Right. And if we're not on it, if we're not focused, then we're going to be taken uh, to the store one more time. So what do you say to Detroiters and to the business, and to the mayor, and to all those, the city council and the folk who are concerned, what do you say to them about these issues? Well, I think we need a smart economic policy. If, if we take public lighting, for example, if we repair at minimum 40,000 lights in the city, that's a huge order. We should be trying to get a manufacturer to locate in Detroit. Mm -hmm. If we're going to buy lights from you, locate here. <laughs> Assemble the lights here. Train right. people how to install here. We need to look well, at every one, Who's articulating that message? Well, we certainly should have that coming out of the mayor's office. We certainly have to do it as advocates. Uh, we need our members in the delegation to do that. But the governor has said that he wants a dashboard of deliverables. So the economic prosperity of Detroit as it relates to things that are on the table yeah. should be an easy push for him. To well get there's there. a little switch in your dashboard that turns the light on. <laughs> Governor, turn your switch on so we can see the light about what we're talking about here today. And as we conclude, I want to thank you for being my guest. I also want to remind the community that we did win the lawsuit relative to the font size of our petition drive. Uh, the Michigan Court of Appeals did tell the Board of Canvassers to put it on when they Absolutely. kicked it back. And so we're still waiting that outcome. One of them has resigned, uh, Mr. Timmer, uh, but we're waiting on them to meet. There's still going to be a lot of action and activity. We need to get this on uh, the ballots and be certified so by August 27th we can do what we need to do in terms of the ballot and get this message out. But the fight is not over. We want to thank everybody that signed those petitions. The 226,000 people, your voices do matter and did matter. If you want to work with us, call 313-871-2087. 313-871-2087. That's the number to the Detroit branch NAACP. We appreciate you. We are in it to win it. God bless you. See you next time on Let the Record Reflect.